right, today's topic is on greed, one of the seven deadly sins. So basically, everyone has that issue. I don't care who you are, how old you are, how young you are, everyone has the thing of greed. And greed is an actual physical sensation that happens in, the, in your body. And it has to do with lack, and then the lack has to do with the lack of feeling loved, feeling important, feeling valued, feeling like you matter. It's all these feelings that are in the sense of lack, and it all it comes out in different ways that appears to be greed. You know, like even people, I know people that are multi, multi, multi millionaires, even close to billionaires, <clears throat> or trillionaire, billionaires, and there's never enough. There's not enough. Got to make more money, got to have more money, because there's just not enough. And so it, it comes out in this feeling inside that you can feel when you think about different times in your life or different situations or different circumstances when you felt like you know you weren't going to get enough or you weren't going to get your share or you weren't going to get your portion or it wasn't going to be fair to you that there's a feeling that happens physically in the body <clears throat> that you can feel and it has a slight agitation it might have a slight anxiety to it and it can also be connected to feelings of, you know, uh, feelings of depression. But basically, it feels like there's just not enough. So no matter how much you have, <clears throat> you'll never feel satiated, you'll never feel fulfilled, you'll never feel like you have what you want. I mean, you can have all the toys in the world, you can have all the money, you can have everything, you can have enough food and shelter and all these different things, but you're still going to feel that feeling of got to have more. And it's that creepy feeling of got to have more that causes behaviors and actions that everyone can feel. I mean, we can all feel each other when, <clears throat> when someone's wanting more, wanting something. You know, we feel that from one another. We can feel the greed that comes with people. So it doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're dirt poor or wealthy, rich you're still going to have that feeling because it's not about the wealth, it's not about money, it's not about the material, it's about the lack of feeling your own self-worth <laughs> or your own self being loved, okay? And it also comes back down to we're still looking outside of ourselves for validation. We're still looking outside to know that we're okay, to know that we're valued or that we're, we're loved, we're important, we matter. So. Part of it is the disconnect from the self, the, the disconnection that occurs when we start to feel like we're unloved or we don't matter. <clears throat> so basically, even though everything starts from past incarnations, it doesn't matter what the issue is. You, when you come into this lifetime, nothing is new. And if we just look at what happens, especially when you come into the womb, you know, the first, those first early stages, the first few weeks of, of life being formed are critical, but then the entire time inside the womb of your mother is also very important, and it also um, dictates what your life is going to be like. So, if you have a mom who in any way is having some kind of stress or difficulties in her life, or even in relationship, or even things like you know, maybe the dad's there, maybe he's not there. Maybe he's emotionally present, maybe he's not emotionally present. But whatever the mom is experiencing, you're taking that in as though it is actually your feelings, it is actually you. So when the mother is focused outside of herself, or, or there's lots of stress or different things occurring, or then also all her wounding and whatever she's lived, whatever she's grown up with, whatever she's holding inside of her own physical body on an energy level, emotional level, you too are taking that in as though it is you. So one of the things that does happen that people aren't fully aware of or fully awake to is sometimes we feel like we're taking on our parents' feelings. Like, have you ever had anybody, or you say yourself, wow, I sound like my mother, or, you know what I mean, or I sound like my father, or wow, that was like my mother's behavior. Well, the thing is, is 
her frequency is in your body. So is her mother's frequency and on and on. So there's like this ancestral lineage frequencies that get passed on that are in you. So you can't really know who you really are until these frequencies are, are released or cleared out of your energy field, out of your body. And you are affected by them. And the thing is, is you don't know that it's not you. It's not your feelings. It's not your beliefs. It's not your programming. And because now that you're drinking it in, it's like taking the tonic, you know, taking the, <laughs> I call it drinking poison, because you are, you're taking other people's energy frequencies and you're drinking it into your energy field, and then you're living as though it's you, it's your truth, it's about you, when in fact it is not. <clears throat> so, since all we can know is ourselves, since we are the center of our reality, since we are the center of the world, everything that we experience unconsciously we believe revolves around us, okay? So that's it, you know, when you can really grasp that, it helps you to understand everybody's little quirks and their behaviors because then you start to see people, oh yeah, well they're insensitive or they're uncaring or they can't feel other people. Well, yeah, because they're totally aware of themselves as we all are. And as long as all we can feel is ourselves, which is pretty much what we feel, then we will always be basing life from this perspective. So all we know is what I need, what I want, what I care about, what suits me, what fits me. It isn't about you, even though I can have some thought or care about you, but at the same time, it's mostly going to be about what do I need. So since we are the center of our own world, the center of our own universe, just imagine that, being in the womb, you're experiencing the frequencies of your mom, you're experiencing her anxieties, all her fears, her wounding, her emotions, and you don't know that it isn't yours. So you take that frequencies into your energy field. So if your mom has issues, which most people do, of feeling unimportant, unworthy, unloved, you're gonna compound that, drink that in, feel that. Now, if your mother isn't totally attentive to this little fetus growing inside her physical body, loving it, nurturing it, talking to it. I mean, there are women who do that, more so lately than way back. Then you're still going to feel unloved, okay? So even, even the voice, you can, hear the, you can hear and feel the vibrational frequencies even as your mother speaks. You can feel and hear frequencies of people outside of the body, their energies, their frequencies, their, their voices, the, the infant does experience that. So whatever is occurring, the only thing that that baby's doing is thinking it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. So we have a world full of people, it's all about me. So of course we're gonna have greed. <laughs> I need, you don't get to have. I'm hungry, you're hungry, well, I have to do, take care of me first. So, as we grow in this, in this, uh, you know, in the womb of the mother, of our, our, our mother, the, the paternal, maternal mother that is, who is birthing us, we are living inside of, we are all constantly in a state of receptivity, receiving frequencies, constantly, it never stops. That also is our interpretation. So remember, when you're little, even if you look at little children, we can watch your scenario and see something occur, and we can have a more mature view of that, perspective of that, as opposed to from their perspective. You know, like if someone takes a child's toy, the child flips out, has a, you know, throws a tantrum, and they just want their toy. Okay, well, we are seeing from different perspective. Maybe that toy had something broken and it's going to hurt the child. Okay, so there's a reason why we're being protective, but the child doesn't know that. All they know is you took my toy away. My toy. Okay, and then they learn too, like if you're with the other children too, oftentimes, I don't know if it's true nowadays, but when I was younger, even raising my kids, you know, you're supposed to share your toys. <laughs> they don't want to share their toys unless they want to share their toys. So, you know, even that, you're made, they're made wrong because you're supposed to share your toys. 
So every time a child is made wrong, they interpret that as I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not loved, I'm not wanted, I don't matter, okay? So since it's not okay to have certain feelings in our world, in our society, we have to push those feelings down. We have to hide those feelings or pretend they don't exist if we are aware of them. Or maybe we push them down so deeply that we are not aware that they exist. So it's the, the feelings that get buried, that get pushed down, that get you know, denied or hidden. Because once you learn that a certain behavior is inappropriate, then you're going to overcompensate and do something different. But you're still going to do something to get your needs met. Okay? Like, for example, if you're a child and, okay, kids love candy. They love sweets, okay? I don't care who they are. And let's just say that they know that there's candy in the cupboard. But they know they can't have any. They're, you know, you don't get to have any. Well, what's that child going to do? It's kind of like an adult, okay? You know, and you have like, an, an, like even chocolate or whatever that is that you might like. When it's in your house, it, the thought doesn't go away. You're aware of it till it's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the same thing happens for a child. They know that candy's in that cupboard or in that drawer. They want it. Grandma, Mama, Daddy, can I have? No. Only if you're good. It's a treat, you have to be good, or you have to do your homework, or you have to do this, or you have to do that, or you have to make sure you don't fight with your siblings, and then you can have a piece of candy. Okay, so already you're getting set up that you have to be a certain way in order to get what you want. Okay, so this is like the setup. This is where we start to develop our little abilities to find a way to get what we want, even if we have to lie about it, even if we have to cheat, even if we have to steal, we're going to get what we want, but we're going to do it hidden. We're not going to be blatantly going, hey, Grandma, I just stole a piece of candy out of that drawer. Now what are you going to do, spank me? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You learn you get in trouble. You learn you get punished. You learn to get sometimes spanked, sometimes physical stuff, sometimes emotional stuff. None of those things feel good. So you're going to find the way to, to get what you want. So it starts really, really, really early in life. I mean, even with infants, you know this. Anybody who's been around infants, anybody who's had children, or watching others, because you're not so aware of it yourself, but as you're watching others with their children, you can see the child is the one running the show. They're the ones who are, you know, they, they learn really quickly, oh, if I cry, then this happens, or, you know, whatever. Then they get, they get what they want, and they're manipulating their parents, and they're not even a year old yet. Okay? So, they're lear we learn really quick. We learn it's a survival thing. It's all about survival. So, in our survival, we've learned how to get what we want. And over time, as we grow up and become adults, those kinds of behaviors still stay hidden, okay? There's a feeling in the body, like for example, think, now just be with this. If you think about something that you really want, but somewhere you believe that you're not going to get it, you can't have it, or someone's not going to want you to have that, or someone's going to, you know, be disappointed because you want that, are you going to make it, you know, are you going to make it open and telling, telling the truth? Are you going to tell people? Are you going to expose it? No. You're going to hide it. The moment you hide a desire, a need, or a want, you've immediately created that hiding, hiding, and then it has to, that feeling of greed, like it's a greediness, like you've got to have it, you want it, and we create that sensation in the physical body. Because it's a hidden, it's a hidden desire, hidden agenda, hidden need that we're believing we're not going to get, we're not going to have, and someone's going to judge us, someone's going to make us wrong, and we already know that judgment means isolation, rejection, betrayals, all kinds of stuff. So it becomes unsafe to share who we are. <clears throat> but still, bottom line is it really still comes down to the basic 
basic, basic, that you're not feeling loved, you're not feeling worthy, you're not feeling like you're enough, and it comes out in this way. So with greed, <coughs> greed, anyway, with greed, it, it, you can feel it. It's almost like you don't want to tell people that, you know what I mean? Okay, like, here's a good one. <clears throat> you have a job and you feel like you deserve a raise, and yet you're afraid to ask for it. Okay? So when there's greed in the body, when we are greedy, because we are, we hide that. So it comes out in different ways. You'll find that it comes out in situations where asking for what you want becomes uncomfortable. I know everyone has that awareness that they're afraid to ask for certain things or ask, ask for what they really want, whether it be from their husband, their wife, their children, their parents. You know, we, we start to feel uncomfortable. We get nervous, we get afraid. We get anxious, like the thought of, oh, I have to ask for, I wanna ask for a raise. Then the body goes through all these tweaky feelings, anxious feelings, because we're afraid we're not going to get what we want, for one thing, because we've already learned that you're not going to get what you want when you want it. You've already learned that you have to come in the back door to get your needs met. I mean, it doesn't matter. It can be things like even having, being intimate with somebody, having the needs met in intimacy. You know, so many, it's like the world is full of people that are not able to just say straight up, hey, this is what I want, this is what I like, this is what I need. Oh, you don't? Okay, let's find another way. Okay, but there's not that. You have to be really clear to, to have that ability to just really be straightforward and ask for what you want. Even, even, it doesn't, it, it's in every facet of your life. You, can, you go to the doctor, and you know, you know, it's like you have certain things you want. Well, you can't be really clear. You, you know what I mean? It's like you go to a restaurant, some people can be really clear, others cannot. It's like, you know, it's like trying to figure out, well, you know, ordering or something. Even people going to restaurants won't order what they want because of the cost of the food or because there was somebody else that maybe doesn't eat meat or maybe they don't eat whatever, okay? So even, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's everywhere. You don't think about it till you start waking up to it. And have you been around people that, that had strong judgments around something and you would just kind of meet them where they live and act like maybe you had the same judgments even though you may not say that? But you're still meeting them where they are because you don't want to be judged or rejected. You don't want to you know, risk being not loved or not cared for. This is all parts of that frequency of greed. And greed is something that's like a disease, you know, it's like it's inside of, it's, it's like you look at the energy frequency of it, and it's a major part, component of the collective consciousness because there's so much lack. When you really look at how much lack there is, I mean, this is all coming out now with the whole, you know, like it's becoming very, very, very um, blatantly displayed and shown with this whole the election thing, you know, when you start looking at the different people and, the, and what's happening. You know, the, the, the amount of people that have the most wealth and then the masses that don't. Well, I guarantee you the masses are the collective consciousness, but even those that have the wealth are still full of greed. It's all about greed. Okay, so greed also is a, is a fertile ground for deceit and lies and cheating and betrayals, you know, things that are very, very negative. But still, everyone still wants to hide it, okay? Like if someone said to you, oh, you're being greedy. Can you feel like if I said to you, you're, you know, you're just greedy. You're just greedy, you're greedy. You're greedy, man, you're all freaking greedy. <laughs> what happens in your body? I feel like, like fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when you feel that, Okay, remember, remember when there's a reaction, okay, the stronger the reaction, the deeper and more profound the truth of what I just said is true. Okay, remember that. You guys, the reaction thing is 
the biggest barometer of how big your issue is. So the stronger your reaction, the bigger the issue is for you and the more you're trying to hide it. Okay. I can say to any of you, yeah, you're greedy. If you didn't have that frequency in your body, you'd probably just laugh mm -hmm. with no charge, no reaction, no feeling whatsoever. It's like, oh, really? Mm, I didn't know you saw me that way. <laughs> but you wouldn't care. But the reaction, like I said, sh shows you that there's something there. So that's something to remember in any kind of consciousness awareness or consciousness teachings your reactions are demonstrating and showing you that you have that inside of you. Otherwise you wouldn't react. It's true. Whatever they're saying to you is absolutely true. It's happening. So yeah, greed's a big one. It's like, like when we look at the collective consciousness and it's worldwide. I mean, if you look at other countries, other, other cultures, especially the impoverished, and they, you know, it's like when you get hungry, you're going to do anything you can. If your children are hungry, you're going to do anything. You will do anything to take care of them. Okay. But you're going to do it in hiding because our world is such that our needs are not acceptable. I'm going to go back to that thing about a kid knowing there's candy in the cupboard. They know it's there. They want it. The mind goes through all these little thoughts about, okay, I can get up in the cupboard and get it and take it. If I get caught, I'll get in trouble. Or I can ask for it. No, 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 can't ask for it because I already know I, can't, I have to be good or I have to be a certain way, so can't ask for it. I still want it. How am I going to get it? Okay, but it creates that feeling of desire, wanting something that you're believing you sh can't have. And then that, that creepy feeling of greed, it's like a, it's a feeling, you can feel it. It's like that wanting of something, wanting it, but hiding that wanting. Okay? Like I said, people are not going to be saying, wow, wow, I'm so greedy, I just want everything. <laughs> and we do, we want everything. You know, we want to be like other people, we want to be wealthier, we want to be, have, you know, whatever. Whatever it is that we like or think that somebody else has that we don't have, then we want that too. So greed's like really deeply in, implanted, it's deeply seeded and starts really, really early. But like I was saying, it really does start way back in our incarnations, way back. Because there's always been the survival people, you know that. When you look back at, at life and you look back at our, our cultures, our histories, and you go back to even before we had electricity or before we had grocery stores. <laughs> I mean, this is all like not that new. I mean, was that right? It's fairly new. Yeah. So not having the lack was like more, many more, more lifetimes and many thousands of years of struggle, survival. So it's also reptilian brain kind of stuff too, is that survival mechanism. You got to eat, you got to survive, you need shelter. So there's always that survival. So greed also really does hit into that core, core, core survival piece. Because if there's not enough food, that hits survival. And if there's not enough food, and you're in a, let's say you're in a clan, oh, someone's lifetime just presented. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's just say that in a past life, and it has to do with being like tribes, like clans, you know, peoples, there's not enough food for everyone and, and it's like really, really rationed, but because you're hungry, all, you know, all you can think about is how to get the food, how to get the food, how to get the food. And you're not concerned about anybody else. Everybody else is just as hungry as you are. Okay. But still you're going to, you know, you'll, you'll die, you'll kill others for it. And which is what you, when you did this. So basically it was like, it had that really devious kind of looking kind of sensation frequency that you wanted it. You knew other people were hungry. You knew other people were starving, but that didn't matter. That's another thing about greed is nobody else matters. Okay. I'm serious. It's like, there's no compassion. There's no empathy for others. It's all about what, what you want, even though you know others are in suffering but their suffering doesn't matter to you, okay? 
So even though you might be all in it together, everyone's hungry, you, you know, you're going to be the one, or everyone on some level is going to try to be the one that gets, gets the food. Okay? So, like I said, we'll kill, we'll murder, we'll maim, we'll do all kinds of things to get what we want. And when you look at what's happening right now in the world, I mean, look what they're doing to humanity. They're poisoning people for money. Okay? This is not a joke. They're spraying the skies. For what? For money. Okay? Power over. Power over. Make the people sick. Disempower them. Keep them afraid. You got power over them. These, it's like, who really cares about humanity, the, the collective beings on the planet? It's, you're not really cared about. So, that's all greed. We know that already. It's all greed. Okay? So, for us, in unraveling our own greed, first we have to know that we have it. First we have to be willing to own that, oh yeah, I do have greed. I have that feeling of wanting, wanting more than I need even. Okay? But it's also that feeling of, in that wanting, it's that feeling of the fear that that will not be met. That you're not going to get what you want. Okay? And even when you start getting what you want, that feeling like you got to have more. You got to have more. Get more. Okay? Remember I was saying about the extremely wealthy people. They're near, they still have the same kind of feeling that it's still not enough. I mean, how much is going to be enough? I mean, some of these people have more money they, than they can give away even to their entire families for generations. It's just like, how much is enough? Okay? And yet they'll see the world starving, they'll see poverty, they'll see, you know, illnesses, and that, there's no, no caring about that. You don't matter, nothing matters, okay? So, even though we're not dealing with that, because that's not where we are, but there's, it doesn't matter, it's still the same. It's the same frequency that we all have. Okay? It's in us. It might be to a lesser degree. It might look different, but it's still the same frequency. It's the same feeling inside. It's a survival feeling inside. We're in survival. Okay? So it doesn't matter that, you know, we have everything, all of our needs are met, there's still that feeling like there's not enough, got to have more. We need to have more. Okay? All right, so now, to start unraveling some of that feeling of greed, the uh, best thing to do is feel into, like, desires. Like, it doesn't matter what those desires are, whatever they are, like, for example, if you're having any kind of financial struggle, there's a feeling and a desire to have more money. Okay? But there's also a feeling, okay, right underneath that, right with that feeling, is also the feeling of survival that you're going to die. You with me on that? Okay? So when you think about the money thing, okay, so money buys food, it buys clothes, it buys shelter, you know, it pays for your, your living expenses. When you think about losing a job, oh, someone's in that right now. Not, someone's in... We're, we're, we're down, our business is down. Right, but there's something going on that you're hitting survival, like big time. So there's terror in the body that has to do with, you're going to die. Does it feel like you're going to die? On some level, don't you have thoughts or feelings you're not going to make it? And if you really track that, can, it, can you start to feel where it really feels like you're going to die? It's death. Wow. Okay, when I, when I bring it to where, when you start tracking it and following it. Yeah, it's like a desperation. Okay, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so when we're in that feeling, remember too that whatever's in the subconscious, we're, we're drawing that to us. So if we're in a desperate desperation, guess what's going to happen? We're going to you're going to we're going to go into desperation, you know? So by clearing out these deep 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 wounding places of lack, not enough, you're not loved, see everything actually goes right back to creation. You know, if we really look at it and we follow it, 
and we keep going beyond all your human stuff, all your human beliefs and all your human connections and worries and concerns and fears, it all comes back to creation itself. We can call it God, we can call it source, we can call it creator, we can call it the all that is, whatever label you want to give it, that's where it really begins and that's where the issue is. We're feeling like creation is not supporting us. You feeling that way? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So what's actually happening is more of a, it's because of the lifetimes of, of your experiences of starving to death, of dying of exposure to the elements, uh, mm -hmm, and also of people taking from you, okay, like seriously. So you've got all these experiences in your life stream that are affecting your, your, your life right now. Okay, so it's creating all this anxiety, all this terror. And it goes right direct. If we go, like I said, direct, it goes into you're not being supported. Creation doesn't love you. God doesn't love you. You're not important. You don't matter. You're not loved. Okay, bottom line. If you were, you'd be having all kinds of things gifted to you in some way, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So everyone experiences this in some way at some time because everyone has that same issue. Everyone at some point believes that they're not loved. Okay, now we're now it's just not just your mom and dad, it's cre the creator itself doesn't love you. Okay? Good unraveling, good unraveling on this one.